The night was cold, raindrops scattered across the road like tiny pellets, the flash of red and blue emergency lights reflected off the wet pavement and the wreckage of a crashed sedan against a broken tree. Come on, kid. Stay with me. Stay with me. Jack the EMT whispered. Drops of rain rolled off his face while he pumped his hands against the ribcage of a teenaged boy. Clear! His partner, Dave, yelled. Jack raised his arms as Dave charged an electric current into the boy's heart. The boy's body jerked on the wet gravel road. Jack started pumping the kid's chest again. Come on, kid, come back to us. Still no pulse, Jack. It's been too long. We ought to call it. Once more. Come on, kid. Again, they tried to revive the boy, but to no avail. Dang it. Jack sat back, wiped rain and sweat off his nose with his wrist. Call it. After a moment of regret, Jack covered the kid with a tarp. He stood up, gave himself a minute. It, it was always painful to lose someone so young. He heard a rock skitter across the ground. Jack swiveled his head toward the black brush from behind the tree. Was someone there? Maybe an animal? He couldn't see anything through the curtain of rain. He rolled his shoulders, picked up a medical bag, and turned away. Let's pack up and get the coroner here. Kid didn't make it? Officer Manor asked him on his way back to the ambulance. Jack shook his head. Not this time. Too bad. This road is dangerous, let alone during a storm like this. Don't I know it with the calls I've had here in the past? Jack trailed off as he placed his bag into the van. Officer Manor nudged his flashlight toward the dark. And right here, near a cemetery of all places. Bad vibes, I think. Just a coincidence. Jack said. A sudden movement caught his eye. Jack squinted against the rain and shifted his attention toward the body. There was a dark form in the rain. Was someone leaning over the corpse? For a split second, the hairs on the back of his neck raised. Then he shook the feeling off. He blinked to make sure his eyes weren't playing tricks on him. There was someone. Short, slim, frail. The form ho hovered over the dead boy's body, doing some kind of motion with its hands, back and forth. Then he saw it. A knife. Jack stepped forward. Hey, get away from him! The dark form jumped up, long wet hair covering a face, light glistening off the weapon and something swinging from the figure's hand. Then the little thing ran away, back into the darkness of the brush. What happened, Jack? Officer Manor asked, scanning the darkness. Jack pointed toward the dark brush. I saw someone, leaning over the body. It, uh, it was an, another kid, I think. Maybe a girl. Officer Manu walked forward, or walked around, sorry, shifting his flashlight around the scene. He came back with a slight twist on his lips. You sure about that, Jack? A young kid walking around in this? How long's your shift been? Jack shrugged a shoulder. Going on 24. Yeah, I need some sleep. Maybe I shouldn't have mentioned the cemetery. Got you thinking of spooks in the night. I was only kidding around, you know. Jack went back to the kid's body and picked up the last medical bag. Maybe he was imagining things. The tarp moved. Jack jumped. Holy heck, Dave. We got a live one. What? The kid. He moved. Get the gurney. You sure? Just get over here. Jack tore the tarp from the body. He saw the kid's face smeared with blood, watched as the ki kid coughed, sucked in air. The kid moaned, help. <laughs> that was a really bad help. Uh, Jack whipped out the portable oxygen and slipped the air mask over the boy's mouth. It's okay, kid. Breathe. We've got you. Nice and easy. You've been in an accident. We're taking you to the hospital and they're going to take good care of you. Do you remember the accident? The boy gave a slight nod. Driving a little too fast in the rain. Wrapped around the tree pretty good. Hang in there, kid. You've just been gifted a miracle. Huh, wait, so the, the girl saved him? That's weird. Jessica pushed the wet mop across the hospital floor to and fro, to and fro. She remembered that saying from somewhere before. She just didn't remember from where. Something from the past. A shudder ran through her as her hands trembled on the stick of the mop. She tightened her grip so it would stop. She felt the hospital staff walk by her. She felt them look at her. She tilted her head forward so her thick black hair curtained her face as much as possible. Not to be seen. 
not to be noticed. No one said anything to her more than necessary. She did not speak to them unless spoken to. She performed her job each day after school and mopped the floors of the children's medical wing. She grew accustomed to the scent of sanitising cleaner and the dismal odour of the sick. She listened to the murmurs of the staff. She paid attention to the beeps of medical machines hooked up to sick children. She studied the various footsteps she heard on the hard tiled floors. Sometimes soft steps, sometimes clicks of heels or stomps of bigger people. Sometimes the steps were rushed, sometimes they were slow. She was aware of each and every child in the hospital wing. She often heard crying and whispers of conversation as she cleaned the floors. The doctor says you're doing really well, Brian. You're eating better. Treatment is going well. That's wonderful, son. A woman's voice spoke from the patient's room that Jessica was near. Yeah, I guess so, Brian murmured. Hang on there, sport. You'll be better before you know it, the man said. And then you'll get to come home and rest in your own bed. I have been feeling a little bit hungrier. That's so good to hear, the woman said. When will I get to go home? I hope soon, son, the man said. When you do, we'll get your favourite pizza from Freddy's Mega Pizza Plex. <laughs> That's, this is so weird. This, oh, this feels so weird, but so good. We'll make it a celebration. How does that sound? Pretty good, actually, the boy said. The man laughed. That's my boy. Bri, Bri, spoke the woman. What are all these strange flakes on your chest? Huh? Look, Harry, what are these? My gosh, what kind of hospital did we, did we bring him to? I don't know. They look like little bits of silver, the man said. Relax, Jane, I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation. They've been taking good care of him here. You even said so yourself. He even looks better today. I know, but the woman called out of the room. Nurse Macy, please. Can someone come to my son's room? Yes, Mrs. Raymond. Is Brian okay? Nurse Macy asked. Yes, but what is this strange stuff on my son? I don't want him... I don't want anything on him that is going to make him sicker. Hmm. I don't know what that is. The nurse went in and checked Brian's chest and brushed the strange flakes off him. I don't think it's anything serious, Mr. and Mrs. Raymond. I'll have staff sweep it up and get some new blankets. Please... I don't want any cleaner or anything on him that's going to harm his recovery. Yes, Mrs. Raymond, don't worry. We would never let this happen. Jessica pushed the mop slowly across the hallway, to and fro, to and fro. This is really getting me wonder what this has to do with Jessica's past. You know, what, what in the past is like reminding her of the words to and fro? That's so weird. There's something bigger going on here. Like, there's something in this hospital that's causing something, and Jessica has a history of something. This is all really weird. I love this. She's so strange, that one. A nursing assistant murmured to Nurse Macy as they were, sh as they were stocking supplies on a medical cart. Hmm, Jessica, you mean? Quiet. Keeps to herself. Never makes any trouble. Nurse Macy shrugged. Nothing wrong with that. Well, she's so frail. <laughs> It's the second time we've had frail in frailty. Looks like a feather could knock her over. Hair always covering her pretty face. He shuddered. Creeps me out the way she lurks around. It's not normal. She's obviously alive and yet she's not really living. Nurse Macy shook her head. You've been watching too many horror movies, Colin. How do you think people come up with these scary movie ideas? They see things that freak them out and write about them. I'm sure you were at an awkward age at 14. We're not talking about me. Besides, I talked to people. I tried asking her something the other day and she just looked at me and blinked like I spoke an alien language or something. Nurse Macy sighed. Oh, Colin. Clang. Just then, something dropped from behind them, making them jump. Colin let out a childish eek. <laughs> eek. <laughs> uh, Nurse Macy glanced down to see a rusted tin can lying on the hospital floor. She frowned. That's odd. Where did that come from? She murmured. She glanced left and right and spotted Jessica mopping not far from them. Oh, Jessica, would you mind picking up this can and throwing it away? I don't know where it came from. Must have dropped off a kitchen cart or something. I'll have to tell them to be more careful with their garbage. Jessica gave a silent nod and, dragging the mop, picked up the can and threw it in a nearby trash can. Thank you. Oh, and Jessica. Jessica slowly lifted her head, her hair parting to reveal her delicate features. Her eyes were dark. Didn't they used to be a brighter brown, 
wondered Nurse Macy. Is there like a Fazgu situation going on here? Is like, is this the fake Jessica, not to be mistaken by the real Jake? <laughs> uh, this is really, this is really weird. Uh, one small beauty mark was dotted high on her left lovely cheek, but her skin seemed to have lost some of the rosy flush it once had. Her lips were delicate and full. Her face was slim and so pretty. She could, she really could be featured in magazines. You're doing a good job for us. Nurse Maisie gave her a small smile. Jessica smiled and it seemed to brighten her despondent features. I'm glad. Jessica spoke quietly, but the glad didn't reach her eyes. I bet you're a big help at home with your family. Do you help with cleaning around the house with your mum and dad? Nurse Maisie watched Jessica merely nod and turn away to continue mopping down the hall. I'm telling you, creepy, Colin said under his breath. Yeah, I agree. Nurse Macy, why is there such a loud car going past? Uh, Nurse Macy just waved her hand at him. <laughs> oh, sh oh, hush. She's just a young girl and you're a grown man. I think you could take her on if she attacked you. Colin shuddered. Don't be so sure. Even though Nurse Macy joked with Colin, she could admit to herself and not explain why. That peering into Jessica's dark gaze nearly broke her heart. On her break, Jessica walked into the hospital chapel. The room was full, was, oh sorry, was empty of grieving family members. She liked it that way, to have the chapel to herself. It was rare, but it was peaceful and quiet and it allowed her to pray. She ran her hands softly over the wooden pews that lined the walkway to the altar and chose the first seat. At the front of the room was a large wooden cross hanging on the wall. She smelled the fresh white flowers set out for display on both sides of the room. There were three rows of small candles waiting to be lit. Quiet instrumental music played through a wall speaker. She pulled the thick silver chain that hung around her neck from beneath her shirt and lifted it over her head, placing the pendant in her palm. The pendant had once been a whole heart, much thicker and, uh, and larger. Now it was slightly bigger than a crescent moon about the width of her thumb, with rough scratches embedded on one side. Nearly finished. That's a creepy line. She clasped her hands around the pendant and closed her eyes. Please help me do good and continue with my purpose. Please help me make a difference. Please help me help others who are sick. Give me the strength to right my wrongs. Give me the courage to do what's right. I said courage. I meant courage because I only read the core and then... Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, miss. Are you doing okay? Jessica blinked and stopped praying. She hadn't heard anyone enter the chapel. She looked over to see the priest standing beside the pew. He wore a black suit with a white collar. His hair was dark with streaks of grey, and his eyebrows were thick over kind brown eyes. There were tiny lines beside his eyes when he smiled. I'm fine, she responded quietly. My name is Father Jeremiah. I've seen you here before. What's your name, miss? Love how we got another Jeremiah. <laughs> Jessica. Jessica cast her gaze down and rubbed her thumb across the pendant. Is there anything I can help you with, Jessica? Jessica shook her head. No, thank you. Father Jeremiah took a seat on the pew across from hers. You look pale, Jessica. Are you feeling okay? Is there something I can get for you? A snack? Some water? Should you be resting? I feel fine. I think. I probably look better when I'm working. Working? Here at the hospital, in the children's wing. I help keep the floors clean, to and fro, to and fro. Nurse Macy says I'm doing a good job, she added. She hoped she was doing a good job. This job had been the perfect opportunity to get closer to those who needed her help. It was rare for her to come across others who were sick in the outside world. She'd heard the car accident last night by chance, a miracle some might call it. She'd heard the terrible screech of tires, the harsh crash of the car against the tree. It had taken her time to get there through the heavy rain. She had watched the ambulance come and the EMTs try to save the boy. They hadn't been able to save him, but she had. Oh, so the girl was her and the pendant healed the boy. That makes sense. Okay. I think I might be getting that completely wrong, but that makes sense. She was glad she'd been there to help. She'd cut it close though and nearly been caught. She could never allow that to happen. Ah, yes. I know Nurse Macy, a very caring nurse. Father Jeremiah nodded. I'm sure you're doing a good job. He cleared his throat. You know, Jessica, 
Some people come here asking for help in their prayers, and I often listen to those who have burdens to release or healing to experience. Expressing our worries, our problems, helps us to let go of what is heavy on our minds and hearts. Jessica simply said, that's nice. She felt like she was already letting go, sorry, letting go of something very important in her own way. She never shared her thoughts with anyone because no one would be able to truly understand what she was going through. If you ever feel the need to talk to someone, I am here nearly every day to speak with, should you choose. I'm happy to help in any way I can. Jessica nodded her head, keeping her eyes downcast as she rubbed the pendant with her thumb. What is that lovely charm you have there? Must be very special to you. After a moment, Father Jeremiah said softly, Peace be with you, Jessica, and left her alone. After a few more moments of prayer, Jessica slipped the chain back over her head and rose from the pew. As per her usual routine, she went to one of the single hospital restrooms. She locked the door and walked to the small mirror above the sink. She inspected the dark circles under her eyes and the paleness of her delicate skin. Some might think she was lovely, but the truth was she looked frailer each day. This was my theory, I think. I think it was everyone's theory that the pendant may be... Like, like she may be scraping the pendant on the patients, um, which is like curing them, but I feel like it's going to make her become more frail, and so she is going to lose all of her energy, her life force. Being lovely was once all she had ever wanted. She could feel the weakness take over her body with each child she helped, with each scrape of the pendant. She wore a black sweatshirt and black pants, and even black sneakers. Black wasn't a welcoming colour, it kept people away from her. It helped her remember that she wasn't there to enjoy life, but had to stay focused on her purpose. Interesting, so this is her... She, she's like full on believing that this is her purpose. Not to live well, but to make others live well. I, I like, to help others. That's kind of cool. From her pant pocket, she re removed a compact powder. She opened the lid and patted the soft applicator to the powder and, drop and dotted her face with the concealer. It was pretty soft ivory that gave her a fresher look. After she put the compact away, she pinched her cheekbones to give herself a little colour. Her eyelashes were naturally dark and thick and her lips full and pretty. When she used to smile, people would smile back at her and be interested in what she said. Jessica used to feel that certain things were important, like how she looked, the best clothes, the coolest friends, the cutest boys, but they actually weren't as important as she had once thought. Now everything was different, and she never smiled unless she had to. Interesting. Jessica left the bathroom to return to work. The lights were dimmed for the evening and the staff had quieted down. As she pulled the mop and rolling pail from the cleaning closet, she heard the faint sound of cartoons playing nearby. Setting her mop aside, Jessica followed the sound to a new patient's room. A little boy with brown hair was curled up on his side, asleep, holding a green stuffed elephant. He was alone. Jessica turned to glance behind her and saw no one looking in her direction. She walked quietly into the room and pulled her chain over her, her head, grasping the pendant. She slipped her knife out of her back pocket and opened the blade. If someone walked in, they'd think she was trying to hurt him. No, she would never dream about hurting anyone. She wanted to help him in a way only she could. She never told anyone about her purpose of helping those who were sick. Okay, now I'm really, really sorry, but this is the best quality we're going to get. Uh, so I, I do apologise about that, but I'll be reading it, so you don't really even have to look at the screen if you don't want to. Beside the bed of the little boy. Here we go. Jessica began scraping roughly at the pendant with her pocket knife. Little shavings of silver drifted down on the boy as he slept. As she scraped, the, her chest seemed to tighten. Her, sorry, her pulse slowed and her breathing became shallow. These feelings in her body were how she knew she was helping this little boy heal. When she felt it was enough, she slid the chain back over her head and, pendant, and the pendant once again under her shirt. Uh, closed the blade and put the pocket knife away. The little boy blinked his eyes open. Blue eyes gazed at her with interest. Are you an angel? He whispered. No, she whispered back. I'm no angel. Go back to sleep. But I'm not sleepy. Jessica's uh, uh, lips twitched. Your eyes look pretty sleepy to me. I think if you close your eyes and count sheep, you'll so you'll get the rest you'll need to make yourself strong. He scrunched up his nose. Sheep? Why sheep? Okay, what would you like to count then? 
I think I want to count elephants. I like green elephants. Okay, you can count elephants. Go ahead, close your eyes and count. The little boy closed his eyes as he said, one green elephant, two green elephants, three green elephants. Soon he drifted back to sleep. Jessica turned to leave and nearly stumbled as a wave of weakness washed over her. Something skittered across the floor. She held on to the door frame and balanced herself as the faint, as the, the something feeling, faintening, frightening feeling. I don't know what this word is, I'm sorry. As the something feeling went away. She licked her dry lips and spotted a raised, a, a rusted spring just by the doorway. I'm so sorry that I can't read this properly. Uh, her eyes widened. She quickly uh, snatched up the spring and walked out of the room to finish her work for the evening. Jessica sat alone at a lab table in science and engineering class at West Wilson High School. Interesting. Engineering. It, uh, so, hang on, hang on, hang on, let's, let's just process this, right? There was a, there was a rusty spring. Huh. And she took it. So this is like, this is reminding me of Eleanor, Eleanor a lot, because we know this is the Eleanor pendant. Is Eleanor back? Did Eleanor take an old Jessica body and replace herself you know, you know, in like To Be Beautiful at the end when um, Eleanor like takes Sarah's body and runs away with it. Did she do the same to Jessica? And now, no, because it's Jessica's consciousness and she's like, she still has memories and stuff. It's not Eleanor. <laughs> this is weird. I don't know what to think of this because there's like, there's still science and engineering class, which we're going to get onto. And there's like metal, there's scrap metal still. This is weird. This is weird. Jessica sat alone at the lab table in science and engineering class in West Wilson High School. She preferred sitting alone, but it always seemed to happen naturally. No one dared to sit next to the weird girl who barely spoke, who barely participated in their world. She felt tired and distant. Uh, yeah, okay. Mrs. Willoughby, is that, yeah, Mrs. Willoughby was droning it on, or droning on about a new project, and if she let herself, Jessica dr could drift off into another place in her mind away from this present reality. She wasn't sure why she continued to go to school. Maybe it was to keep up the presence. Uh, huh? <laughs> her old life was now far behind her. There really was nothing here for her other than she didn't want to make things difficult by drawing attention to herself by missing school or even getting bad grades. She really could do without the many secrets, oh sorry, the many scents of perfume, body color, and oh, body colour? That's weird. Body odour and junk food that surrounded her every day. The boring lectures, the teenage gossip, the stares from searches and students. Sorry, teachers and students. Oh my gosh, this is so difficult to read. I'm sorry, this is all we've got. <laughs> but it's enough, I'm sure. Uh, and not to mention the overall loudness of school. Pounding feet, yelling voices, uh, slamming lockers, music playing, uh, cursing, crying and laughing. So much noise, so many constant reminders of kids her age who were natural with friends, or normal with friends. Teenage problems and families at home who loved them even if they didn't always remember to be grateful for them. Jessica had a home once. She'd had a family, she'd had everything, and one day she gave it all up by making the wrong choice. Oh, she made the wrong choice? If there was one thing Jessica had, um, had something in her life, it was that, or learnt in her life, sorry. It was that some choices couldn't be re reversed and the only thing to do was move forward the best that she could. Look, it's the creepy girl, a student whispered behind her. Someone giggled. She hardly speaks. What's the matter with her? Another girl wanted to know. She's like a mannequin who barely moves. Mark Johnson says she creeps around the graveyard. Oh my gosh, like a freaking zombie. Who would have thought West Wilson High would have its very own walking dead? Jessica didn't say a word. She'd heard it all before. Zombie girl. Mannequin. Dark witch. The walking undead. Although she did her best not to draw attention to herself, she still did. Just not the kind of attention she used to receive. She'd become the target of mean go gossip, teasing, and sometimes pranks. 
Overall, she was a loner, a girl who was often avoided as she walked school hallways or sat in the cafeteria at lunch, which served her just fine. The more she was avoided, the easier it was to check out the present high school reality. Um... There were a few more whispers from the girls before something small hit the back of her head and dropped to the floor. More laughs. Uh, crack. Something cracked. It, even some laughs from the surrounding students. Jessica's something, her hair down, with her... This is so difficult to read. With her hand, unbothered. Girls? Mrs. Willoughby scolded. Is there a problem? Mrs. Willoughby was on the younger side as a teacher. She wore dark rimmed glasses and often sported a black ponytail. Um, sported a black ponytail. She was one of those teachers who spoke with her hands and was eager for class participation. She seemed to leave Jessica alone though. One of the girls cleared her throat. No problem, Mrs. Willoughby. I would hope not. I think you girls would rather be out with your friends at lunch than helping me clean up the science lab today. No, we're good, Mrs. Willoughby. Thank you. You are so kind. Now may I continue without being r rudely interrupted? Yes, Mrs. Willoughby, the girls answered together. At the lab table next to her, a boy picked up the usual eraser that had bounced off Jessica's head. He tossed it back at the girls. Real mature, he muttered. What's his problem? The girl whispered, annoyed. He's new. He doesn't know the reality of zombie girl. Uh, Jessica glanced at the boy and then look, looked away. He was indeed new to the school. Okay, class, choose your partners. Mrs. Willoughby announced with a clap of her hands. Make sure to choose someone you know you can get to, uh, work accomplished with instead of someone to goof around with until the last minute. This will be 50% of your quarter grade, so make it good. Jessica blinked. Choose your partners? What had she missed? The new boy stood and came to her table. Hi, he said. Want to be partners on the project? Jessica swallowed hard. She supposed she had to. It wasn't like she'd get another offer. She nodded. He sat next to her in the empty chair. I'm Robert. Jessica. This project is going to be kind of cool, huh? Jessica slowly nodded, unsure what it was about. She hadn't been paying attention. Robert had an athletic build build with something hair, hazel eyes, and golden skin. He wore a pale blue coloured t-shirt and faded jeans. There was a something leather bracelet, bracelet? A leather bra bracelet? That can't be right. <laughs> On his right wrist. He was the kind of boy from whom she would have wanted attention in her old life. Now she wish she was invincible or invisible. Uh, I transferred from out the town, he continued. My dad is an engineer and got a new job here. He was excited about this t class for me. Robert pushed his hair back with his hand. Were you excited? Jessica flinched. What, what was she doing? She was supposed to keep to herself. Yeah, it's fun, you know, building stuff. But this will be my first time in a class like this. Jessica nodded. She'd used to think building stuff was fun too. These girls were acting dumb, he'd said you quietly, with a shrug of his shoulders. There were girls like that in my other school. I never hung out with them, just mean to everyone for no reason. They think it's cool. I guess when it's not. Doesn't bother me. He lifted his eyebrows. Really? That's cool. Most people wouldn't say that. Then he smiled. I can't believe we get to build our own mini robot. Jessica stared off in the distance. Oh, perfect. Uh, after school, Jessica was, uh, oh god, Jessica was something at, at a table in the, what does that say? Something at a table in the school courtyard waiting for Robert. They, they'd had a couple of class sessions to plan but the bot project and decided to make a mini rolling bot that carried items on its back and it was controlled with a remote. The catch was that they had to have the tray lift up and down. I, I don't think I'm reading this right, I'm so sorry. Robert had taken apart an old remote control car and discovered the components to make their bot active. Robert dropped a cardboard box on the table, causing Jessica to recoil. He pulled out his old remote control car, 
I asked Miss, Mrs. Willoughby how much we could use from, how much we can use from this on the bot. She gave me a list of what we can and can't use. Robert said, handing Jessica the paper. Today he wore a pale yellow shirt that buttoned up down the front with grey sweats. Jessica wore her typical all black outfit. Jessica took the list he handed her. We need to find other components for the ones we have to replace. Yeah, I know. What are you doing later? Mrs. Willoughby wants us to salvage as many components as we can instead of purchasing them. Maybe we can go to the junkyard and see what we find. Oh no. Oh no, it's the junkyard from To Be Beautiful. It definitely is. I swear to God. Jessica quickly blinked a few times. I know we need a couple of string, uh, springs, something to be used as a tray, maybe old wiring. I, I can't, she stumbled out. Why can't she? Huh? Robert looked at her with a slight frown. I can't go there. I, I have to work at the hospital. I, to work, I forgot. Robert shrugged. Oh, well, we can go another day. We have time. Maybe, oh, sorry. Uh, maybe she is an Eleanor victim, right? Could, could she be a victim of Eleanor that we didn't see in Fazbear Frights? And she is actually made of scrap metal, but the pendant could be keeping her alive? I don't know. I, d I don't know. This is weird. This is very weird. Um, oh, well, we can go another day. We have time. No, Jessica said a little too sternly. She could feel her insides begin to shake. She started to pack her notebook into her bag. I have to go. Robert stared at her with surprise. Now? I thought we were going to work on the project. We made a schedule. We should keep to it if we want to finish on time. Can't today. Tomorrow. You go to the junkyard, okay? It's not my thing. All right, it's for the project, you know? It's not like I, ha I like to hang out at junkyards either. Uh, are you okay? He grabbed Jessica's wrist and Jessica pulled away as if stung. Are you, sorry, are you sick or something? You look a little pale. I don't feel well. Do you want me to walk you home? It's not a problem, I can come with you. Maybe you shouldn't be by yourself. No, I don't need help, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, if she doesn't have a family, does she have a home? <laughs> That might be a stupid question, right? Or is she like living by herself? She grabbed her bag and quickly rushed from the table. She felt faint as if she could just kneel over at any second. She managed to make it off school grounds and lean against a tree for support. She grabbed her pendant with a shaky hand and closed her eyes. Her breath filtered out of her mouth quickly. Everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay. After a few moments, Jessica managed to calm her breathing. She licked her dry lips as she settled down. She didn't know what had come over her. She'd learned to steady her emotions, or at least mask them from others. She couldn't let her emotions erupt like that again. It made her too vulnerable, and when she was vulnerable, she couldn't think straight. She set off toward the cemetery. The wind had picked up and was blowing her hair wildly. The cemetery had become her sanctuary in the few months. In the recent in the recent months, a quiet, peaceful place. Is this a home? No way. Wait. Maybe maybe them calling her zombie girl is actually like an actual thing. Why does she live in a cemetery? When she stepped into the cemetery, she often stopped to read the headstones to get familiar with the souls who had been laid to rest. She wondered about her own grave. Oh oh sorry, and what her stone would read. She doesn't have a grave yet. That would have been a weird story if she like visited her gr or she lived in her grave. She actually was a zombie. Oh, ma that's a good theory. Could she actually be a zombie that's been revived using the power of the, the pendant? But whenever she scrapes off the pendant, there's less power coming from that pendant. And so she's turning back into her dead self. That's such a weird premise for a story. And I like it. It was more than likely she would never get a burial. As she strolled through the graves, her mind drifted back to Robot. Oh, <laughs> robot. Her mind drifted back to Robert. She hadn't... <laughs> she hadn't really met a boy so kind and confident before. If she let herself, she could start to like him. 
which was not possible now. Maybe in her old life she could have opened herself to having a true friendship, maybe something more. But that all changed the day she made a choice. And each day she was doing her best to make up for that choice. She had a purpose now and she was sticking to it. She made her way to the furthest and oldest of family crypts. Uh, there, hidden among the graves, was a small mausoleum made of stone with dark, stained glass windows. Old, dried vines covered the top and hung down the sides of the structure, patched with white cobwebs. She gripped the rusted handle and leaned her foot on the bottom of the door, pushing with everything she had in her. The heavy door creaked open and scraped along the, do uh, along the floor. Dust particles twirled in the sunlight. She pulled out her small flashlight and stepped inside, and pushed the door closed until she was surrounded by the dark. She switched on the flashlight and walked to the back of the small enclosure, passing what she assumed were family, well, a family of dead people named Holloway, then turned around a corner to a small sitting area that was made of stone. She'd cleared all the cobwebs of as many spiders as she could manage in this little hideaway. The groundskeeper neglected this section of the cemetery since the graves were over a century old. She kneeled down on her sleeping bag and grabbed a pack of matches to light three yellow candles placed off to the side. She dropped her book bag and sat on the sleeping bag and pillow. Here she could let down her guard. No one, should, no one could see her. No one could judge her. No one could wonder about her at all. She was safe for now. Next to her, she had a duffel bag of her signature black clothes, a small overnight kit with some makeup, a hairbrush, toothbrush, and toil toiletries. She kept her life simple, minimal. She had one small item from her old life. She reached in the bag and took out a white rabbit's foot and let it dangle from her finger on the short chain. She used to carry it with her everywhere, thinking it brought her good luck. Now she didn't believe in good luck but it was a small reminder of who she used to be and who she would never be again. She lay down on the sleeping bag and let herself rest. Jessica noticed Nurse Macy was humming under her breath at the nurse's station while she was performing her mopping duties. It was mindless, really. Mindless in a, kind, a weird kind of way. Weird was the theme of her life these days. But what really concerned her was the fatigue that weighed down upon every inch of her body. Her grip on the mop was shaky, and even though she moved at a slow pace, she was tired. It was a bone-deep exhaustion that had been becoming more and more frequent each day. She used to have so much strength, and now she often wished for the time when the pendant had become a whole, when it had been a whole heart, and she'd been full of energy. It is straining her. The truth was, she'd been busy the last few nights with the patients. She lifted a shaky hand to the pendant that lay under her shirt. It was definitely smaller now, thinner. A tremor of fear vibrated down her spine. She lifted her chin. She could do this, she told herself. With as much strength as she could muster, she continued to push the mop. To and fro, to and fro. Hi, Jessica. It's a lovely day, isn't it? Nurse Macy mused, a wisp of a blonde curl shifting on her forehead as she walked over to her. Nurse Macy always wore scrubs in shades of orange, blue, green, or purple. Sometimes the patterns had funny characters or animal prints. Today they were cats making silly faces on her top. Her smile was welcoming. Uh, and even though Jessica did her best to keep her distance, Nurse Macy had this energy that pulled others toward her. Jessica nodded. You want to know why it's a lovely day? Nurse Macy asked. Jessica paused and looked at her expectedly. Most of our patients in this wing have improved in some way, she said with a bright smile. They're eating, even smiling. Most times there's a heavy sadness that you can feel around this floor, but now, today is a good day. When there are smiles and meals being eaten, um, and pain has decreased, it's like magic. In my line of work, you have to take the wins when you can get them, Jessica. Do you remember that? Take the wins when you can get them. Jessica liked that. She'd remember that advice. Nurse Macy gazed into Jessica's eyes. How are you feeling today, Jessica? Jessica looked away. Good. That's nice. Anything new going on in your life? How's school? Jessica gripped tightly on the mop. Nothing new. Everything good. Glad to hear it. Well, Judy calls. See you later, Gator. Jessica watched her wave off to, uh, uh, to visit another patient. Even though she enjoyed being around Nurse Macy, it was getting harder to avoid her direct questions about her personal life. 
She suddenly saw the nurse come to a halt right in the middle of the floor. Sheesh, what's going on with all this junk, Jessica? There's an old fork on the floor. Would you mind cleaning it up? Between this and the weird flakes, 